Hello, I am Sebastian, and in this keynote, I would like to take you on a journey through time, having a look at the last 25 years of PHP and the last 20 years of PHP unit. When you do a journey, like a journey through time, you have to decide where to start. You have to start somewhere, and our journey begins in 1968 when Rasmus Leerdorf, who would later create PHP, was born. 1969, one year later, Alan Kay and his collaborators created Smalltalk, a programming language that was very much ahead of its time and that continues to influence programming language design, as well as the implementation of programming language runtime, runtime environments to this day. In 1978, I was born. Hello world, it's me, I'm Sebastian. There came a moment in your life when maybe you were in a store somewhere and you walked up to, to a Commodore 64 and you typed a little basic program that would just print your name infinitely and you would go, yes, I am a god. And you wanted to be a programmer. This is a quote from a presentation that I watched a while back by Uncle Bob Martin. And while I never went into a department store and screamed, yes, I am a god, and while I did not do that, I actually went into department stores before I got a computer myself. Um, I was going to the library at the time, reading books about programming, but since I did not have a computer myself, I could only program with a pencil and a notepad, and sometimes at a department store, on a computer that was on display. And yes, that was a Commodore 64. If you cannot relate at all to this era of our industry and do not have any childhood memories of the C64 or computers like it, then I can highly recommend this book by Jimmy Wilhelmsen and Kenneth Grunewald, Generation 64. Even I had a lot of fun reading this book, although I am not Generation 64. I was born a couple of years too late to have a Commodore 64, and I got my first computer. The C64 was uh, going out of style. So back in 1986, I realized that I wanted to be a programmer. Like I mentioned earlier, I was going to the library at that time and reading books, but why did I do that? I did that because of this movie. Maybe, and very likely, I would have had this epiphany, I want to be a programmer through a different event, reading a different book, watching a different movie, some sort of event that would have influenced my life in, this, in the same or in a similar way. But for me, it was the War Games movie. I wanted to control a machine like that, not to launch nuclear missiles or something like that, but so somehow it was appealing to me to learn how such a machine works and to have control over it. 1989, Kent Beck creates SUnit. Remember Smalltalk from a couple of slides ago? SUnit was the first unit testing framework, and it was created by Kent Beck for the Smalltalk programming language. It was a really novel idea at the time to have automated tests and to implement these automated tests using the same programming language that you use to create the application that you want to test. So that was in 1989. 1990, I finally get my first computer and it was an Amiga 500. This was what it looks like, looked like when I unwrapped it. Lots of clunky bits and pieces, big screen, big power supply, clunky mouse, and so on, but I liked it. Of course, I played games on it, but quickly I started to learn programming for real on this machine. I started programming in BASIC. The Amiga um, came out of the box with a programming environment for Amiga BASIC. And Amiga BASIC was a bit special compared to other BASIC dialects. There were ways 
to somehow put graphics on the screen and use the Amiga's custom chips for graphics and sound. But while it was possible to do that, it was neither fun nor was it very efficient. The resulting programs were really, really small. And soon I would look for programming languages that would allow me to fully leverage the potential of the Amiga's hardware. And that was not basic. 1993, I get an Amiga 1200. I still have this Amiga 1200 to this day. And while I do not use it on a daily basis, every couple of weeks, uh, I turn it on, play an old game, or continue relearning what I knew as a teenager, how to do C and assembly programming on the Amiga, using the Amiga's custom uh, chipsets to do real-time 2D and 3D graphics. So this is what I did in 1993. I started programming in C and assembly. I had friends that were very involved in the Amiga demo scene. So I went to demo scene parties, met people, discussed with people. And this was my first experience of a programming community, meeting like-minded people, talking about problems that everybody was having, like how, how can I implement this in a better way? How can I make this a little bit faster? Fun times. I also implemented uh, extensions for mailbox uh, software systems using AREX and C and try to do figure out what I wanted to do. Um, was looking for a creative outlet, tried to doing music um, on the Amiga, tried doing graphics on the Amiga, but I was not really good at that. But I found I had fun programming on the Amiga and at least I thought at the time I was really good at it. And this is what, something that I want to continue. So this is an example of what I did back then. This is a really small assembly program for the Motorola 68 uh, CPU family that was in the Amiga using um, bits and pieces of the Amiga's um, peculiarities. And what this does is basically turn the screen black and draw a line that scrolls from top to bottom endlessly until um, you interrupt the program. Nothing really fancy. 1994, we fast forward uh, a little bit. James Gosling creates Java. It was released as Java a year later in 1995, the same year that Rasmus uh, created PHP. And this is how Rasmus announced the release of the first version of PHP, PHP 1.0, on June 8th, 1995. And back then, PHP was not the recursive acronym that we know today. Back then, it was Personal Homepage Tools, or PHP Tools for short. And that was version 1.0. And it was basically a set of small, tight CGI binaries written in C. And why did Rasmus do that? Rasmus wanted to have some dynamic elements on his website. And at the time, you, ba you basically only had one way of extending the web server to have dynamic functionality on the website. And that was to either, depending on the web server you were using, either take the C source code of the web server and build your dynamic functionality, in, functionality into the web server and recompile it, or if you were using Apache uh, or other web servers at the time, um, write a CGI binary in C that is executed for certain requests from the web server. And this was really tedious, it was slow, and Rasmus did not want to do HTML templating in C itself. He wanted what we would today call a domain-specific language for dealing with HTML and form processing and stuff like that, um, for which the, pro the actual program code that you write does not have to be in C, does not require recompiling, and that's how the scripting language PHP um, was born. So you can do guest books and form functionality and whatever, and that was PHP 1. This is Rasmus, by the way, giving a presentation at some event about this exact moment in time when PHP started. 
And what it looked like, that is what you can see in, in his background on, on the big screen, this is what it looked like to implement dynamic website functionality back in 1995 in C using CGI to extend the web server. Right? That is not fun. That was um, the Perl approach to the problem. He did not like that. I did not like that when I um, was asked a couple of years later to implement dynamic functionality for a website. Um, someone who I knew from the demo scene contacted me and said, hey, I need this functionality. Can you implement that? And I had never done anything web development related at the time. And he, I was given two options of programming language, Perl and PHP. I tried Perl first. I did not like it. And I think it took like an hour or an hour and a half to make a decision. I do not want to work with Perl. Um, I do not understand that. I, I then looked at PHP and was able to learn enough PHP within a couple of days to implement uh, what my friend was asking for. So this is what early PHP looked like. Um, yeah, not really interesting. 1997. Um, Erich Gamma and Kent Beck take a plane from Zurich in Switzerland to Atlanta, uh, Georgia in the US to attend the conference. And as you usually are when you fly and have a long flight like that, um, you are bored and you want to pass the time. And if you cannot sleep, you want to, pa to pass the time even more. So Kent Beck had already had some experience with Java at the time. Um, sorry, other way around. Erich Gamma had some experience with Java at the time and wanted to have something like SUnit, the unit testing framework that Kent Beck had created for Smalltalk for Java. Kent Beck, according to legend at least, did not have any experience with Java yet. So they took the time, they used the time flying from Zurich uh, to Atlanta to work on the initial version of JUnit, the unit testing framework for Java that made automated unit testing really, really popular in the late 1990s. 1997, PHP FI is released, PHP Forms Interpreter, putting the emphasis on what PHP, um, what major new feature in this were otherwise PHP 2 uh, version was. So forms was a big thing, PHP FI. And soon after that, something happened that Rasmus never anticipated. Rasmus, Rasmus's idea was that people would implement the actual business logic of their uh, web application in C code and would only ever use PHP for templating and as a bridge between the program logic in the C code and HTML front end stuff. But PHP FI was so easy to use that more and more developers started to build web applications with it. And these web applications quickly grew. Until, and then these two gentlemen came along, Andy Goodmans on the right and Zev Zureski on the left. At the time, they were studying computer science in Israel. And they had a, on the one hand, they were taking a compiler class and learning how to properly implement programming languages and build a compiler for them. And on the other hand, they were, um, besides university, working at an internet provider and realized more and more people are using this PHP thing and more and more people are complaining that this PHP FI thing is rather slow. Can we do something about this? Oh, it doesn't really have a proper compiler. Maybe we can connect our two concerns, learning about compiler stuff at university, trying to make PHP for the customers of the ISP where we work faster. Um, and that's how PHP 3 started, which was released in 1998, which is also the year where I got my first x86-based uh, PC. Until 1998, uh, I only had an Amiga, and my Amiga was good enough um, for what I needed to do at the time. I was 
using the internet, using my Amiga, using dial-up connection with the 56K6 um, modem. Um, was expensive. It blocked the phone line, which was at the time. This was before everyone had a, had a first a cell phone and then the smartphone. But it was good enough for me. And I finished high school in 97 and started um, university in 1998. And suddenly I needed um, a more powerful machine than my Amiga. So I mothballed my Amiga and it would take quite some time until I dusted it off and started using it again. But that is a story for uh, a different day. And 1998, I get my x86 based PC and I start programming in PHP. And I already mentioned how that happened um, a couple of minutes ago. And since then, most of the programming that I do is using PHP. I've been doing PHP now for 22 years. And in hindsight, everything is, of course, much clearer, usually. So a couple of years ago, I read a book on the history of the Amiga and found this paragraph in there. The Amiga's free software community was certainly the most sophisticated and active in the world of personal computing prior to Linux. It should not be a surprise that countless Amiga users migrated to Linux and other open source operating systems as the Amiga's necessary ultimate fate became clear. For much of the spirit of the Amiga free software community persisted in these communities without being tied to a single corporation's decisions and fate. Indeed, the Amiga's fate serves as an object lesson for the modern open source movement, speaking to the way that even excellent hardware and software can wither and said excellence is proprietary on closed source. If you will, in a way, I grew up on the Amiga community, in the demo scene community. For me, everything I did in code back then, the code was shared with others. I got feedback on my code from others. I read code by others. And we learned from each other by reading each other's code, by critiquing each other's code, by brainstorming around how can we make this better. And when I made the move to the PC, to x86-based um, computers, I was apparently unconsciously looking for something that I did not know the name of, and that was free software and open source. And I found that in PHP as a technology, and I found that in PHP's ecosystem and community. 1999, Steak Bucken starts working on Pair. And if you have never heard about Pair, good for you. You do not need to know about Pair. It was an important stepping stone in PHP's life at some point point in time, but that time is long gone. Nobody should have a pair environment anymore. Nobody should have a pair installer lying around or something like that. Don't do that. Um, if you're still using pair for something, get rid of this technical debt and move on. But back in 1999, Stick Bucken did a wonderful thing for the PHP community by creating Pair, and later on, people like Greg Beaver, who worked on the Pair installer, and Fabien Potencier is um, the Pyrum um, Pair channel server. They did good things for the PHP community, but this is now obsolete, and I'm already tiring of talking about uh, obsolete technology. Life is too short for talking about obsolete technology. So let's, uh, let's just move on. In the year 2000, uh, PHP 4 is released, a huge improvement over PHP 3. And it's also the year where I start contributing to PHP myself. I started using PHP late 1998. During 1999, I started um, subscribing to new Usenet groups on PHP, 
subscribed to mailing lists about PHP, asked questions, eventually started answering questions, eventually got lured into contributing to PHP's documentation. And then in 2000, I took the next step and started to contribute to PHP itself. Um, I have not done a lot on PHP itself. I fixed various build issues over time, fixed small bugs over time, implemented some small features, did some maintenance chores, but I did not do and I did not contribute any significant feature to PHP itself, at least not in code. What I did a lot and what I continue to do is take part in discussions, um, help with um, RFCs for new features, try to figure out whether a, pro a feature that is proposed for PHP makes sense, try to figure out what consequences the addition of a feature has um, to my own open source projects, to other open source projects, and try to weigh um, the benefits of having these new features against the drawbacks of having to ad make adjustments in the ecosystem to that new feature, things like that. Um, but of course, you can query a Git repository to, to, for the commits that I did over the years. It's a couple of hundred, not that much. Others did way, way, way more and more significant work has been done by people with a lot fewer commits uh, than I did. But yes, I can say I have contributed to PHP, but let's move on. In 2000, um, it was the world's second PHP conference, and it was in Cologne. Um, you may ask why the first is struck out. A, a stri um, there's a strikeout in the uh, in the first. Well, until last year, I thought that this PHP conference in October 2000 in Cologne was the world's first PHP conference. Last year in December, I learned that it was not. In fact, it was the world's second PHP conference. A couple of weeks after um, the PHP conference in Tokyo, Japan, and I didn't know about that. And um, so, world's, PH world's second PHP conference in Cologne was definitely the first one that I went to. It was the first one where I gave a presentation. I gave a presentation on my second PHP-based open source project, which was PHP Open Tracker. Uh, my first open source project written in PHP was a library for accessing POP3 mail servers through PHP. Please, that code is still on the internet. Neither look at PHP OP3 or whatever the name of that library is, or don't also don't look at PHP Open Tracker. It's not that I'm ashamed of the code that I wrote over 20 years ago, but nobody can learn anything from that. And it should most certainly be no longer used. 2000, Michael Feathers uh, creates CPP unit. CPP unit is the second port of the original S unit, the first port being J unit. And 2000 is also the year where I start to work on PHP unit. And I did that because I had a really great professor at university who exposed as students to JUnit, and um, I liked the idea of having an automated way of testing my, my application. And I also was exposed at that time to the idea, to the methodology of test-driven development. And I realized quickly, this is how I want to work. And my professor knew that I was involved in the PHP community. And he said, open source is great. PHP is certainly a good language for, for web development. But can I interest you now to, in focusing on Java as a language? Because I see that you like unit testing. I see that you like test-driven development. Um, but nothing like JUnit exists for PHP. And then I said, um, well, just because something like JUnit does not exist for PHP does not mean that it cannot be implemented. And that's when I started working on PHP unit. 
the next thing or the, the first big problem that I hit was that there was already a project named PHP unit on SourceForge. Remember, back then, in 2000, there was no GitHub yet. And there was also no Git. And Subversion was maybe in development, and some people may have been already using that, but it was really far on the horizon, and nobody was using that, at least none of the people that I knew. So back then, version control was CVS, the predecessor of Subversion. And the big platform where all open source projects were hosted was SourceForge. And SourceForge only had unique project names. They are not namespaced by a username like on GitHub. And somebody had already created a project named PHP unit, and it was supposed to be a unit testing framework for PHP, but I could not get it to work. I tried to reach out um, to its author and maintainer. I never heard back. Um, so I needed a place to host the code for my PHP unit. So I asked some people and People that I asked said, hey, it's fine. Put it on cvs.php.net. And that's what I did. So I waited for, for a couple of months. My first code for PHP unit was written almost to the day uh, 20 years ago. But it was, I waited until 2001 until I felt, OK, cannot put it on, on SourceForge. I have to put it somewhere. Um, so let's just put it on CVS or PHP.net, and that happened in 2001. You can still see that because that repository was eventually um, migrated from CVS to Subversion, and it's still available as, at svn.php.net. It was eventually moved uh, to Pair, um, became part of Pair, was installable using the Pair installer. Again, forget about Pair. Do not install PHP unit through Pair. Don't even try that. Uh, move on. 2004, PHP 5 was released. Big release, big improvement over PHP 4. Finally, um, good object-oriented uh, programming support. It would take until PHP 7, until we got a really good type system. But PHP 5, at least when it comes to object-oriented programming, lay, laid a lot of foundation um, for improvements that came later. PHP Unit 2 was released in 2004. PHP Unit 1 was for PHP 4. PHP Unit 2 is for PHP 5. PHP Unit 1 actually works with the PHP 4 that I have on my Amiga, but I get sidetracked again. Sorry about that. Um, 2005, PHP 5.1 comes out. Some people later said PHP 5.0 was alpha, PHP 5.1 was beta, PHP 5.2 was stable, PHP 5.3, which we'll get to in a bit, took a really long time, but was the most important release for PHP probably. So PHP 5.1, 2005. Um, 5.2 uh, in 2006. 2006 was... Um, an important year for me as well. I moved uh, to, to Norway to live in that uh, apartment that you see in this photo for a year. Um, next door on the, on, on the second floor, Derek Rettans, uh, the author of Xdebug, lived. Um, and this was a time that was really important for both PHP Unit and Xdebug because during that time, uh, Derek and I closely collaborated um, among work things, the reason why I was in Norway, um, to make code coverage functionality in PHP, in PHP unit a reality. Why did I move to Norway? I moved to Norway to write my uh, diploma thesis uh, to finish university. And I did that in collaboration between my university and the company um, where Derek worked at the time. And the company basically paid me to work on the topic for the diploma thesis. It was a good year. Um, 
2006 is also the year where I take PHP unit out of cvs.php.net, out of the pair umbrella, and move it to my own subversion repository. There were two reasons for that. On the one hand, I was tired of being limited by the shortcomings of CVS um, compared to subversion. And on the other hand, I did not like some of the policy that was in place uh, in pair. And for instance, for each major version, I had to rename the classes um, of my application. PHP Unit 3 was about to come out, and I would have had to rename PHP Unit 2 underscore framework underscore test case to PHP Unit 3 underscore framework underscore test case. And I just did not see a point in that. PHP Unit 3 comes out. 2009, um, I found a company, uh, the PHP Consulting Company, together with Arne Blankertz and Stefan Briebsch. And professionally, of course, that's the most important event uh, that happened to me um, over the years. But I do not want to do a sales pitch right now. Um, 2009, PHP 5.3 is finally released. PHP 5.3 took a really long time because originally it was not supposed uh, to even exist. Originally, the plan was to release PHP 6. And PHP 6 was supposed to have uh, Unicode everywhere in the language, in the engine. At some point, uh, the decision to do that was um, abandoned, and PHP 6 minus Unicode was released at PHP 5.3. The most important feature in PHP 5.3 was namespaces, and namespaces allowed the PHP ecosystem, the community around the PHP programming language to take the next step forward. In this year of 2020 and the pandemic, seeing pictures like that makes me really sad because back then, what? Well, like about a year ago, this would have still been possible. We had a really great party um, with a barbecue in Munich to release PHP 5.3. That was re a really nice event with over 100 people from all over the world. That was really fun. Um, thanks a lot to the people who organized that uh, once again. And I really hope that soon there will be a time um, when we can have gatherings uh, like that again. There was no PHP 25 years party this year. There was no PHP unit 20 years party as was planned this year. This year is strange and sad, and let's just hope that uh, soon everything will be better again. 2009 PHP unit moves to GitHub. Uh, for PHP unit as a project, this was the most important step. Moving to Git and to GitHub suddenly made it a lot easier to contribute to PHP unit. And the number of people who contributed to PHP unit um, started to grow. Two years later, 2011, Niels Adermann and Jordi Bojano create Composer. And this is really, or this was really important for the ecosystem because suddenly we had a really, really good dependency management solution for main, installing, updating, maintaining the dependencies of a project. PHP 5.4 comes out in 2012. Uh, PHP Unit 3.7 comes out. Um, also, was the first. Or PHP Unit 3.7 was the first version of PHP Unit that could be installed using Composer. It was also the first version of PHP Unit that was distributed as a PHP archive, as a FAR. PHP Unit 3.7 could still be installed using the pair installer, but again, we do not talk about pair anymore. PHP 5.5 comes out in 2013. And around that time, um, 2014 in May, 
the discussion starts on the mailing list where development of PHP is discussed. Uh, and Dimitri um, came to the list and said, I've been looking at performance. Um, I tried JIT, I experimented with JIT, I built a proof of concept using um, LLVM, and the result was amazing for synthetic benchmarks, but not really for real world stuff. Um, and I think before we can even talk about JIT, we should look at a lot of not really low hanging fruit, but a lot of stuff that can be optimized with regards to data structures and memory allocation and reference counting and infrastructure, things like that, before we can even get uh, to a just in time compiler. And with this message, the development of what was later released as PHP 7 was kicked off. And talking about kicking things off, the motivation for the PHP project to think about performance at the time was Facebook's efforts in creating alternative PHP runtime environments. First, hip hop for PHP, which was a transpiler from PHP source code to C++ code that was then compiled with GCC's G++ compiler, and then later HHVM, and then later again, hack as a language on top of HHVM. And this was the kick in the butt that the PHP project needed um, to take the next step forward with regard to performance. 2014 PHP 5.6 is released, the final minor version of the PHP 5 version series. PHP Unit 4 comes out, the first release of PHP Unit that follows um, the new release cycle. I will talk about the release cycle uh, in a little bit in more detail. 2015 sees the release of uh, PHP 7. It has taken a really long time since PHP 5 came out. Um, PHP 7 grew much faster. In some cases, I have seen three or four times performance improvement for real world code. Um, without making any significant uh, changes to the code. It executes the code not only faster, but also using less memory and less power, which is great. And it introduces a scalar type declarations complete or making PHP's type system more complete. And over the years, more and more work was put into that to make it even better, even more complete. PHP Unit 5 is released. 2016 sees finally the release of Composer 1.0.0. Before, Composer did not really have a stable release, although everybody was already using it. Uh, to celebrate the occasion, um, they put Composer as a FAR on the floppy disk and golden floppy disk at that and put that up for auction on eBay. That was a fun um, event back then. 2016, PHP 7.1 is released. You, have, you may have noticed that starting with PHP 5.4, uh, basically, PHP is on a annual release cycle of a new minor version every year in the fall. So 2016, PHP 7.1, PHP Unit 6 comes out. And around that time, I realize that I have become something that I did not intend to become. And that analogy, that metaphor behind what I have become has something to do with this opening screen of a game that I played a really, really long time ago on my Amiga that was very um, seminal for me. That was my first 3D dungeon crawler. This is the original Dungeon Master. and. There's a metaphor called Dungeon Master in software engineering that was coined by Alberto Brandolini a couple of years ago. And he said, the dark secret of the Dungeon Master is that he knows every trap in the existing legacy software because he was the one to leave the traps around. I am sorry, but I became the Dungeon Master of PHP Unit. What do I mean by that? 
over the years, it was mostly me who contributed to work, who worked on PHP unit. Yes, every once in a while, there were code contributions, um, but those people never really stuck around for long. And when I asked people about that, most common answer was either one of the following two, either I only fixed this one bug that really um, annoyed me, or I implemented this one missing feature that I really, really needed. And now that it's there, I'm no longer interested um, in working on this. Now it's your job to maintain that and make sure that it keeps working in uh, future versions. And the other answer was, it was not really pleasant to work on PHP unit because the code is so complicated and I do not understand um, what is what and where I need to make a change. And this is really frustrating and I do not want to work with this code base. And everybody who has ever worked with an existing software system, with a legacy system, knows that. PHP unit is now 20 years old. Of course, there are a lot of not necessarily bad design decisions that were made, but design decisions that no longer make sense, that need to be cleaned up. And something that made sense 20 years ago may no longer make sense today. And hopefully I also learned something about software design in the last 20 years and would make certain decisions different today. So around that time, I thought really hard, reached out to people, um, hashed out ideas, and was looking for ways, how can I stop being the dungeon master of PHP unit? How can I change the way PHP unit is developed, both on the process level, but also, and most importantly, in the code itself to make it attractive for additional developers, developers other than me, to regularly contribute to PHP unit. The problem is in software design, often the consequences of your decisions don't become apparent for years. One of the advantages of having to live with JUnit for eight years is now we can look back and see which decisions we made worked nicely and which we would have done differently. This is a quote from Kent Beck, one of the two authors of JUnit eight years after the first version of JUnit came out. And apparently I'm in good company. Other people, people like Erich Gamma and Kent Beck also made decisions that years later they were no longer comfortable with. They would like to change in future versions of JUnit. So let me make it really clear. I am sorry. I am sorry if a design decision I made caused problems for you. I am sorry if correcting such a design decision caused problems for you. I would really like you to understand that correcting these design decisions while they constitute backwards compatibility breaks in some cases mean that these design decisions do no longer harm people that either start using PHP unit or start contributing to PHP unit. So it makes, at least in my opinion, the world a better place. Background on some of these decisions, as well as how and why they were corrected, is available in a couple of articles that I wrote. Back in 2017, there was the first PHP unit code sprint. And code sprint is an event that, unless there is a pandemic going on, ever since 2017 has happened twice each year, once in spring and once in fall. And a code sprint is basically a weekend, usually a Friday and Saturday, hosted by a company um, where people who already regularly contribute to PHP, PHP unit or people who want to learn how to contribute to the PHP unit can meet, can work together with me and other regular core contributors to PHP unit um, for two days and learn how to contribute to PHP unit, learn how to solve the one bug that annoys them, learn how to implement the feature that they need, um, 
improve the documentation, improve the continuous integration pipelines for PHP unit, whatever. And that has been a great success. And I'm grateful for all the companies that have hosted PHP unit code sprints in the past. And I'm grateful for everybody who showed up and contributed to PHP unit. And it makes me very, very happy that some of the people that came to the project through these code sprints continue to regularly commit to PHP unit and make PHP unit better for everyone. But to give you an idea, this is the code sprints that we had so far. There was, of course, two, or there were, there were of course, two code sprints planned for this year. And thanks to the pandemic, they did not happen. Hopefully, in a year or two, we can return to having uh, regular code sprints to work together, to have fun together, all the while improving PHP unit. 2017 also saw the release of PHP 7.2. PHP unit 7 came out. PHP 7.3 came out. PHP unit 8 came, came out. You know, this is really boring, and it's exactly the point that I want to make here. PHP and PHP unit are grown up. They are mature products. They have reliable release cycles. You know a new version, a new major version of PHP unit comes out in February, and you know a new minor version of PHP comes out in the fall. PHP unit finally got a logo last year. Um, this is what it looks like. I'm really happy that I was able to get Ian O'Toole, um, one of my favorite illustrators and graphic designers for board games, um, to make a logo for PHP Unit, design a logo for PHP Unit. PHP 7.4 came out, which is the final release of the PHP 7 version series, because this year PHP 8 came out. Last year, 2019, PHP Unit, the PHP Unit project was invited by the European Union's uh, Commission to. Uh, come to Brussels for a hackathon event where they basically invited developers of, of open source projects that are important to the European Union to, on the one hand, have a hackathon and work on their software. And this is Andreas, Arne, and Ewout as they just started working on the event system that will come soon to PHP Unit, which will be a really great addition. And on the other hand, the European Union's intention for this event was to listen to the needs of open source developers and figure out what the European Union and what politics can do to improve um, the lives of open source developers in Europe. 2020, um, PHP Unit 9 came out, which is the current version of PHP Unit. I would have liked to celebrate 20 years of PHP unit this year, but it didn't happen. PHP 8 came out, which is a really great release. It finally has a just-in-time compiler that I mentioned earlier um, that was not done for PHP 7 because some other stuff was could be, could be done before we got to the JIT. PHP 8 has the potential um, to more efficiently and effectively execute PHP programs. It also brings uh, with the union types and attributes really uh, good new features that make code more readable uh, and more robust. You guessed it, um, there were no celebrations for PHP's 25th anniversary. So if you look at all of these changes over the years, what has really changed? Performance. PHP is today a lot, a lot faster than 25 years ago. Type safety. PHP is not an explicitly typed language. It's not a language where it is mandatory to put type declarations into your code, but it allows you to do so, and it allows you to do so in more and more places with more and more um, specific types. And that allows you to gather with static analysis tools, type checkers like Psalm or PHP Stan to write type safe code 
in PHP a language that was not designed and conceived to be site safe. The language has gotten more and more consistent. Huge step now with PHP 8, which is more consistent and more strict than PHP 7 when it comes to um, handling of parameters for internal functions, for instance. Paradigms have changed. 25 years ago, PHP only supported procedural programming and scripts were executed top down, intermingled with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and whatever. Today, most PHP code that is written is object oriented, where separate concerns are cleanly implemented in separate objects, plus some ideas from functional programming like immutable uh, values, immutable objects, and some functions like array map uh, and so on. So that has changed. Tooling has improved a lot. Um, 25 years ago, something like PHP unit did not exist, of course, but over the years, more and more static analysis tools and um, code uh, manipulation tools have been released. PHP code sniffer, PHP CS fixer, Sun, PHP Stan, um, backward compatibility checker, and infection, and whatnot. All these tools allow us to work much more professionally with PHP than was possible in the past, which of course means that the processes uh, with which we develop software using PHP has changed. More and more developers do test-driven development, more and more developers have continuous integration pipelines and so on. This is just one manifestation of how processes for development have changed. So what's in store uh, for, for um, PHP unit in the next versions? So the goals for PHP unit are basically two things. Allow tests to be written more easily and clearly. So for instance, in a recent version of PHP unit, I think it was in PHP unit 9.4, there was a new assertion added that allows you to really easily and conveniently test for equality of immutable value objects by recognizing that they have an equals or equal to methods and automatically behind the scene call that for you and perform um, the assertion that you want. This reduces the amount of code that you have in your test. This makes the test code that you have easier to understand and easier to read and makes the output from PHP unit more precise in case something goes wrong. In addition to that, another overarching goal of PHP unit development is to run and evaluate tests better. This year, for instance, that meant finally adding support for path coverage to PHP unit. So not only so code coverage functionality is no longer limited to line coverage, but you can also see where are the branching points in my code are true and false cases of the branches um, evaluated. What are the linear independent execution paths? Uh, to, through my unit of code and are all of them covered by a test? And if not, which path is yet uh, to be tested? So that is one thing. Um, Evout continues to work on improving sorting and reordering um, tests to run them um, better and to give more useful output um, uh, using the test docs format. So a lot of things are happening and we can all look forward to more functionality in the future. The release cycle. The new major version, the next major version will be PHP unit 10, for example, is released in February. New minor versions, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, and 10.5, for example, are released in April, June, August, October, and December. Support for major version X ends two years after its initial release when major version X plus two is released. So 
February of this year, PHP Unit 9 was released. Its support, its regular support for bug fixes ends in February 2022 when PHP Unit 11 is released. Support for minor version x.y ends when minor version x.y plus one is released. And after the regular support, there is a new thing that we recently introduced called live support. And live support is intended to keep an otherwise unsupported version compatible with new versions of PHP. So for instance, regular support for PHP Unit 8.5, which came out in February of 2019, will continue to get changes that make it compatible with PHP 8.0 and PHP 8.1 and PHP 8.2 and so long and so on after its regular support for bug fixes ends next February. This will continue continue to do so, or we will continue to do so, we will continue to make, keep, make changes to keep PHP Unit 8 compatible with new versions of PHP until this will no longer be possible. For instance, when the change required to make PHP Unit 8 compatible with a new version of PHP would break backward compatibility in PHP Unit 8. That will not happen. But as long as it's possible to do so without making backwards compatibility breaks, um, live support means that PHP Unit 8 will work with future PHP versions. So in closing, what's next for PHP Unit? Um, PHP Unit 10 is on the horizon. Two months from now, it will be released. Um, the big new feature will be the event system that is developed by Arne Blankertz and Andreas Möller for over a year now. And event system means that at a lot of different places in PHP unit, at a lot of different places in the life cycle of a test and a test execution and the PHP unit test runner, events will be emitted that can be consumed and processed by extensions for PHP unit on the one hand, but also by PHP units internal um, loggers for um, XML log files in JUnit format or code coverage functionality and, and, and so on. And the idea here is to finally have a cleanly defined API and extension point for observing what PHP unit does when it executes your tests. This will make it really convenient, hopefully, and easy to implement new loggers or new integrations with, with IDEs and other tools. And I'm really looking forward to that it, because it also means that we can clean up um, some really, really old code in PHP unit that uh, causes problems on a regular basis. What I'm currently working on personally is support for PHP 8 attributes. Big feature, one of the big syntax features in PHP 8 is the introduction of attributes. So we finally have a real syntax for metadata that you can put on classes and methods. Where PHP unit currently uses doc comments. Support for PHP 8 attributes will be added in addition to support for the doc comment annotations. Eventually, the doc comment annotations will be deprecated and eventually they will be removed and we will only use PHP 8 attributes. But that is way, way in the future. Um, and of course, like every year with the new major version, lots of cleanup uh, under the hood. Because, as I mentioned earlier, things that were necessary 10, 15 years ago are no longer necessary today, and they cause problems. Um, and that if the code, if the functionality the code implements is no longer needed, and if the code that implements that functionality causes problems, it's a good thing to clean it up and delete it. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. I would like to 
um, wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.